What's up guys, on today's video we're gonna be replacing the ignition lock cylinder in my 1983 Chevy C10. Uh, currently, the one I took out, couldn't get the key out. So I went ahead and replaced it, so that way I can take my key out when I need to. So nobody can steal my pickup. But everything seems to be working good. So I'll get to the video real fast. Uh, if you enjoy the video, like, comment, subscribe guys. It really helps out and uh, we'll get to it. All right, guys, the first step in getting the ignition, ignition lock cylinder out is you got to take the steering wheel off. So you're just going to remove your horn cover. If it's a factory steering wheel, there will be three T20 screws you got to remove for like the horn mechanism. The horn doesn't work in this pickup, so you don't have to really worry about honking the horn too much. Basically, once you get these three, three screws out, the horn... Uh, like mechanism will come out It'll be a little plate you'll have to get out of there you'll have to remove the steering wheel nut which is a 13 16 then you are going to need a steering wheel puller I just went and bought a cheap like $15 one at O'Reilly's it's a I think the bolts are 5 16 with an 18 for thread pitch so you're just gonna screw those in there. Try to get them about as even as possible. And then speed this process up a little bit. And then I'll go back to the actual socket so I don't break nothing. But the steering wheel's locked, so it should be a little pretty easy to come off. You're just gonna slowly start to turn it until it pulls it off the splines. Easy as that. Once you get the steering wheel off, you're gonna have like a little plastic cover for the lock plate. So you should be able to just take like a flathead screwdriver, kind of go around the edges, prying it up. This one's been off a couple times. I've had to fix a couple things already, replace the bearings. The other specialty tool you're gonna to need is this uh, lock plate compressor. Basically, it'll just thread on just like so. And then you will turn the nut till it compresses it where you can get the like a little snap ring out of there. It's kind of a pain sometimes. I like to use just a little pick, like a hook pick, grab it that way, and it comes out pretty easily. Just a simple, basic little hook pick. Should be able to kind of pry up on it, grab it a little bit. I think these are honestly supposed to be replaced every time you remove one. That's kind of what holds everything together. So, once you get that off there, you can back off your lock plate nut. Unscrew it. The lock plate should come out. Here's that little snap ring. So snap ring. Might have to wiggle a little bit, get the lock plate off. Lock plate. I think another part of the horn. Then you'll have a spring and a little retainer for like the uh, presses down on the bearing. Alrighty. So. Now you're gonna need to remove the turn signal switch indicator thing. It's just three Phillips head screws. You actually have to get the turn signal into, so you can get one of them out. This one actually only has two because apparently someone lost one at one point, probably me. And then you will also need to remove the turn signal lever itself, which is just held in by a Phillips head screw. 
just like so. And then you should have enough slack you can just pull it out enough, get it out of the way. And then the ignition lock cylinder is held in by a pin. It is just Phillips headed as well. Now this is real very important, so you don't want to lose it. So use a magnet, or I'm just going to use a pair of needle nose pliers. Grab it out like so. Okay. Now I think it's recommended to get the ignition lock cylinder out that you turn it all the way forward and then it should just slide right out. So to put the new one in, we're gonna turn it all the way forward. Sets up in a little groove. Like so. Then you will just start going back together with everything. You will put your lock cylinder pin back in. Tighten everything back up. Make sure it cycles well. Now we can start going back together with our turn signal, like cancellation gear. I think it's called a turn signal cam. Could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it's called a turn signal cam. So you get that, get it in place, run your screw back in. Get your other screw if you didn't lose it already, like I do all the time. And if you don't have enough room to uh, get it out, you can always disconnect it at the base of the column and just pull it out that way. Then we'll go back in with our turn signal lever. Once we get it in, make sure everything works, and we'll just start going back in reverse order. <clears throat> so then we will get our lock plate. Kinda gotta fiddle with it till it starts to go on there by itself. Don't wanna force it on there. Then you will need your lock plate tool again. But before you put your lock plate tool on, you need to put your retaining clip on. Trust me, I forgot that many a times. Had to go back and redo everything. Once that's screwed on, you can start just sliding your nut down for the mechanism. Once you get it on far enough, you can start going back on with the lock ring. Once it's on, back your nut back off of the lock plate compressor. Unscrew it. Kind of line up your little plastic cover. It's kind of a kind of a pain. say that now it actually has a little 
kind of indentation for here, I'm guessing. Oh yeah, that made it a hundred times easier. Okay, so now we can get our steering wheel. You're gonna have to take your puller back off. Then you're just gonna slide your steering wheel on, kind of get it lined up where it needs to be. Then you will take your nut. Granted, this probably ain't the best way to do it, but. Let's run it on with some Ugga Duggas. Don't forget your plate. It all just fits together. You want to make sure that the part with the slot is facing up. So that way your horn button will go on. Once you get it on, get your horn button. Line the groove up with the top. Then make sure everything's still working. And that's all it takes to replace a lock cylinder. I mean, you need a few specialty tools like a steering wheel remover and this lock plate compressor. But other than that, it's all relatively easy. Just take your time, go slow. I've been inside the column a couple times, so I've kind of, I know which goes where, but if you enjoyed the video, guys, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.